All right, in this video, we are going to um, practice graphing quadratic functions in standard form using the information I gave to you in the previous video. Right. So remember, standard form is that. All right. So I'm not going to use this chart unless I need to find extra points. All right, and you'll see what I mean in a minute. All right, so first of all, A is what? 1. B is negative 4. And C is 7. That's the first thing you want to do, find A, B, and C. Right. Now, A is positive, all right, so that means it's going to open up. So I'm going to have a vertex, which will be the lowest point. Uh, B is negative 4, so let's, find, let's go ahead and find the vertex. So we do that, is remember x is equal to negative b over 2a. Right. I'm finding the x coordinate. All right, so x equals negative b is negative 4 over 2 times a, which is 1. So negative times a negative is a positive, and 4 divided by 2 is 2. So the vertex x coordinate is 2. So I'm going to put that in here because we're going to find the vertex. Okay. Now to find the y coordinate, I take 2 and I plug it into here. So that becomes 2 squared minus 4 times 2 plus 7. So that's 4 minus 8 plus 7. So that gives me what, 3? It gives me a 3. All right, so my vertex is at 2 and at 3. So there's 2, there's 3. So there's my vertex. Let's put a V there for vertex. Remember, it's opening up. So my rest of the points should be above 3. Of the y value should be no, low, no less than 3. Everything else should be above it. All right, my axis is symmetry. And since I got the vert, I'll go ahead and just sketch it down. So there's my vertical line as my axis is symmetry. So whatever I plot over here, if I fold the paper, it will fall over here. So I get a nice symmetrical parabola. All right, let's find the y-intercept. Y-intercept is, remember, the y-intercept is 0, C. Well, C is what? 7. So there's my y-intercept. It's 7. So 0 would be 2, 4, 6, 7. All right, here's my y-intercept. All right, so all I need now is one more point over here so that way I can sketch my parabola. Well, I got my vertex. I got a point over here, so I'm going to use my axis of symmetry to find my other point. Now, since this is the axis of symmetry, the distance from this point to the axis is the same on the other side. So distance from here, all right, so we look from here to here. So it's distance of 2. So I'm going to go over here, I'm going to go a distance of 2. And then just come up here and put the point because these two should fall right on top. So this new point is at 4, 7. And this is 0, 7. So these should have the exact same y coordinate, different x coordinates. And there I go. There's my parabola. All right. Let's try another example. All right, so remember, A is 2, B is negative 12, C is 19. So let's find the vertex. Well, A is positive, so I know it's going to open up. It's going to look like that. So X is equal to negative B over 2A. So it be negative B is negative 12 over 2 times 2. So that's positive 12 over 4. 12 divided by 4 is 3. So now I'm going to plug 3 in here. 
So I get 2 times 3 quantity squared minus 12 times 3 plus 19. All right, so this is 9. Using my order of operations, 9. 9 times 2 is 18. 12 times 3 is what, 36? Yep. And plus 19. So I do 18 minus 36 plus 19 is 1. So my vertex is at 3, 1. All right, so we got three for our x um, for the x coordinate of the vertex. So now we're going to take three. We plugged it in, and we did all that. We get one. So our vertex is at three one. Here's three one. That is also where our axis of symmetry is. So might as well go ahead and just draw your vertical line right straight down. Since we know it opens up. So we know all my y values have to be positive. So that's fine. The y-intercept, y-intercept is 0, c. And c is 19. So my y-intercept is at 0, 19. So it's somewhere up here. All right. So the distance from here to the axis of symmetry is a distance of three. So that means I go on the other side, I go a distance of three. One, two, three. So right now, so this would be six and 19, while this is at zero and 19. Sketch my curve and go. Now you notice here A, A, which is two, is greater than one. So my parabola should you know be wider all right but you notice my scale goes in increments of one while this goes in increments of two so therefore it doesn't look like my graph is getting wider all right let's look at another example this one okay we'll be using the definition of a function to explain why some functions have more than one x-intercept Here's an extra objective for this problem. So A is negative 3, B is 0, C is 5. A is negative, so we know it opens down. So my vertex will be a max, or be the highest point. So to find the vertex, I use x equals negative B over 2A. So be negative B will be 0 over 2 times A. So be negative 0 over negative 6, which is 0. So my x coordinate of the vertex is 0. So I plug 0 back in for x. So x squared or 0 squared is 0 times negative 3 is 0 plus 5 is 5. So my vertex is at 0, 5. You notice that's also the same as my y-intercept. So we can't find the y-intercept because we already found it. It's the same as the vertex. It goes 0, 5. Since that's 0, that means it's a y-intercept. Now my graph opens down. So it opens down. All right. So I have to come up with another point. All right. In order to come up with another point, then I can reflect it. Therefore, I can sketch my curve. So you get to pick any value you want for x. You want to pick a negative value or a positive value. Um, it doesn't matter. So let's pick, um, I don't know, let's pick one. All right, so I'll plug one in. So I got negative three times one squared plus five. So it gives me negative three plus five, which is a positive two. So one, two. One, up two. And now the distance from here to here is a distance of one. So I'm going to go a distance of one. So this is at one, two. This is at negative one, two. So numbers I put negative one in, that becomes positive one, gives me negative three, gives me a positive two. So I still get two. And there is my curve, my parabola. All right. Now here, three. All right, never mind. I'm sorry. We have I think we have one more example. All 
All right, so here A is 1 half, B is negative 1, C is negative 6. It's positive, so I know it opens up. So my vertex will be the lowest point. So to find the vertex, x equals negative b over 2a. So it'd be negative b, so it'd be 1 times negative 1 over 2 times 1 half. So this is 1 over 1, which is 1. So my vertex, I put 1 in for x. Okay. So put 1 in, so this be 1 half minus 1 minus 6. So 6, that's what, negative 7 plus 1 half. So that gives me what? Um, brain fart. Uh, up negative, oh my gosh, negative 6.5. So I'm going to go 1 and negative 6. I'm going to go 2, 4, 6. Here's 7, so 6.5 is somewhere in here. So just estimate it. That is my vertex. So from there, my graph is going to open up. Okay? So my axis of symmetry is right down that same line. Find my y intercept. My y intercept, which is, should always be the easiest thing to find. 0, C is negative 6. So there's my y-intercept. So it's right here. So the distance from here to here is 2. So I go distance from here to here is 2. So this is at 4. All right, in this problem, um, I made an error on my previous video number 4, this one right here. I'm going to redo it again. Everything is, is correct except I plot my vertex wrong. Vertex is at 1, negative 6.5, and I did it at 2, negative 6.5. So the vertex is still at 1, negative 6.5 from the previous video. That's still correct. I just graphed it wrong. 4, 5, 6, 7, so 6 right here. Here's my axis of symmetry. Then my y intercept was at negative 6. All right, so my y-intercept It's still at negative 6 because that's what my c is. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. From the distance from here to here is a distance of 1. So far, I should go a distance of 1 on the other side. So this is at 2, negative 6.5. Oh, negative 6, excuse me, I can't. And this is at 0, negative 6. So therefore, there's my parabola. Now, in, the, in this problem, if you notice, if I continue, I end up having two x-intercepts. Later on in chapter 4, you're going to learn how to find those x-intercepts. So just find the vertex, the y-intercept, and a third point to graph it. And then you also have to find the x-intercepts as well, all right?